Hello everybody, this is Pastor Mark Stewart and we want to welcome you back to our YouTube broadcast. Uh, again, I, I wanted to say thank you for tuning in and uh, praying for us up here at Mission Hill Baptist in Hayesville, North Carolina. Uh, initially, we're doing this broadcast for our church and for our people, but we're grateful for all of those that have been tuning in to watch the messages. So you please pray for us as uh, we try to bring you this message today.
with a wonderful singing today and uh, the message that we can hear in these songs. It is in Christ alone. Uh, our salvation is found. Our hope is found. Uh, we have the forgiveness of sins. We have uh, all that we have in God through his son, Jesus Christ. And uh, what a blessing that it is to know that. <clears throat> Today, we're turning in the book of Exodus, chapter number 12. The book of Exodus, chapter number 12. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to be reading a very familiar story. Uh, found here in Exodus chapter number 12. And uh, so you follow along with us to, uh, today, uh, if you can. Exodus chapter 12, and uh, I'll begin reading in verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all uh, with water, but roast with fire. His head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt... And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And that's as far as I'll read. I uh, know that was quite a bit of reading. Uh, not, uh, not too much, but quite a bit of reading for this message. But uh, I have had my mind uh, on this uh, Passover. I know Easter is uh, coming up before long, and uh, it's not just simply because Easter's coming around, but the Lord really began to put up on my heart for this uh, Sunday, uh, this Passover message. Uh, and uh, that's, that's what it is. That's where the children of Israel get the Passover, is when 
God gave them uh, this that happened when they were in the land of Egypt. Now, for those that do not know much about the story, uh, the children of Israel had found themselves down in the land of Egypt in the days of Joseph. And uh, right on uh, through the days of Jacob, and uh, then for 400 years, because they're, uh, and they were welcome at first. They were welcome in the land of Egypt uh, at first because of Joseph and because of Jacob and his family. Uh, but then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph, and he enslaved the children of Israel. And for 400 years, they were in bondage down in the land of Egypt. And uh, their uh, bondage got worse, and it got worse and worse. And uh, they began to cry out to the Lord for, for God to send a deliverer unto them. Somebody that could deliver them from the hand of their taskmasters and from the hand of uh, Pharaoh. And uh, so they began to pray. And uh, they lived hard lives in the, the hot land of Egypt down there and under the whip of their taskmasters. And uh, it got worse and worse and worse. Well, there come a day that uh, there was a, a young lady that uh, she had a, a baby and uh, she named him Moses. And uh, Moses was put into the bulrushes. Uh, his mother uh, did not want him to be killed along with all of the other Hebrew children that the Pharaoh was going to kill. And so she hid him in the flags of the Nile River. And Pharaoh's daughter found him there in the flags and uh, raised him up. Pharaoh was raised up in, uh, or Moses was raised up in the house of Pharaoh. And uh, Moses began to see uh, all that was happening to uh, his brethren, the Hebrews, and how that they were abused. And, and uh, the story goes on that Moses wound up having to flee Egypt, and he spent 40 years being a, a shepherd in his father-in-law's house, and then God called Moses to come back. He is the deliverer that they had been praying for. He was called to go back into the land of Egypt where he had fled from. And uh, so uh, he had uh, seen God upon the mountaintop uh, there uh, when he was uh, in, in the, the wilderness and uh, God spoke to him. And of course, God gave him a staff and God told him what to say. And, and uh, Moses was uh, very insecure or seemed to be as insecure of himself. And he didn't even know if the Hebrews would listen to him if he went back. And he said, who shall I say that uh, has sent me? And the Lord told Moses, said, tell them that I am hath sent, sent you. And so Moses now has a message. He is being sent to be the deliverer for the Hebrews down there in the land of Egypt. And uh, the Lord began to send one plague after another into the land of Egypt because that Pharaoh would not let God's people go. Many people have heard that saying, uh, Pharaoh, let my people go. That was God saying to Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. And uh, Pharaoh would make a promise and tell Moses, I'll let them go. But then he had hardened his heart. And he would not let them go. And uh, that's the way the devil is. The devil, he's a liar. He, he doesn't intend to ever uh, give God's people any leeway at all. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And, uh, but here, here they are, the children of Israel, in bondage, and it's getting worse and worse. And God begins to send plague after plague. He sent frogs down in the land of Egypt. And uh, that was a detestable thing to those Egyptians. All those millions of frogs coming in their streets and coming in their houses. And 
coming into Pharaoh's palace. And I mean, they were just by abundant. God sent those frogs into the land of Egypt. And if you'll, I'll say this about the, the, the plagues that God sent. If you'll study the plagues that God sent into the land of Egypt, those plagues, every one of them, had something to do with the gods that the Egyptians served. And so what God was trying to say to Pharaoh was that he is the true God. Right. Their gods that they're worshiping uh, are not the true gods. That God is in control of all creation. Right. Amen. And God was in control of those frogs. And then God sent lights. I mean, could you imagine a, I mean, just a, a, a nationwide lice infestation like you've never seen. And uh, all of these plagues that happened, they happened upon the children of Egypt, not on the children of Israel. Amen. God always made sure that the children of Israel, those Hebrews, were protected. But these plagues that come in, they affected those in Pharaoh's house they affected those that were Egyptians living there in the land of Egypt. So here this last plague takes place. And then flies come in. This uh, plague of flies. And then uh, the fourth one was the moraine upon the beast. It was a, it was a plague. It was a, it was a blight. It was a sickness only upon the animals of the Egyptians. It was amazing that it did not affect the cows of the Hebrews or the donkeys or the camel. Anything the Hebrews had, it didn't affect them, but it affected all the animals that were belonged by Pharaoh and by the Egyptian. And so that, that was the moraine upon the beast. And then there was the boils that began to come upon the men and the women and the children that were Egyptian, boils smitten upon them, boils from their head to their feet. And uh, all of this, God was just saying, let my people go. Let my people go that they may come into the wilderness and worship me. That's all Pharaoh had to do was let God's people go. God wasn't asking Pharaoh for anything that was not his. Amen. Amen. God said, I want my people to come and worship me. Let my people go. Amen. But he wouldn't let them go. And so God was sending plague after plague, 10 plagues all together. After the boils, the hail that came down from heaven. Hailstones. Hailstones that came down that, that was so big that if one hit you, it was enough to kill you. And it, they, I mean, I don't know how many thousands were killed. And all the, and the animals, you know, that were still alive were killed by those hailstones that came down out of heaven. And God sent them. And then after that, there was locusts that came into the land. Locusts that came and devoured the land. Wiped out the crop only for those that were the Egyptians. Only those of the house of Pharaoh, not of the Hebrews. They still had their uh, farms. They still had what they were growing, what little bit they had. God did not allow the plague to affect his people. And it's because they were under the shadow of God's mighty hand. Amen. Amen. And here they were, and the locusts came in. Then darkness came into the land. Exodus chapter number 10, there was a darkness that came into the land. Now here we pick up, it's coming to the last plague. And the last plague is going to be the death of the firstborn. Now I'm getting into the message right now. I wanted to lead up to this so that some of those that may be watching I have never heard of the story of the Passover and all that it entailed and all that it was that God wanted his people let go by Pharaoh. God said, let my people go. And he would. And so Moses was sent down as the deliverer. He was God's spokesman. And he told Pharaoh, God, Jehovah, I am 
wants you to let his people go. And he said, Pharaoh, this is the last one. If you don't let God's people go, God's going to smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. And now I'll tell you, this is, this is going to be any firstborn. And this one had a hinge on it. You see, this night God told Moses to tell all the children of Israel, said, you're going to take a lamb. This is going to be a Passover lamb. And uh, we read it in your hearing. And uh, this lamb, you see, ever since the beginning of time, God has always demanded a sacrifice uh, for sin. Right. And uh, God has always demanded a blood sacrifice of an innocent lamb or, or, or a bullock or two pigeons or two turtle doves. Uh, however that it was, to the, uh, it was to the making of the house. Some houses had more, some houses had less. The houses that had more would bring a bullet. Those in the middle would bring a lamb. Those that were very poor brought two uh, turtle doves or two young pigeons to be sacrificed. But it took the blood. It was a blood sacrifice of those innocent animals. And so God said this. He said, they shall take every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers. A lamb, a lamb for a house. And uh, then he said this. He said uh, in verse 4, the household be too little for the lamb. So it goes from being a lamb to the lamb. It's not just any lamb. It's the lamb. And Christ is the lamb. Amen. He's not just any lamb. He is the lamb of God. Amen. But then he goes from a lamb and the lamb. And many preachers that preach this then he goes, he said in verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish. I'm going to ask you a question today. Is Christ your lamb? Amen. Is he just any a lamb? Is he a lamb? You know about it? Or is he your lamb? You're going to need the lamb, the lamb of God. You're going to need his blood. You're going to need his sacrifice. Amen. And this night, the night of the Passover, why is it called the Passover? God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. And he said, I'll make sure that the destroyer passes over you. Amen. And so they were supposed to be in their house. And God said, I want you to take the blood of that lamb, your lamb. And he said, take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorpost of the house. Now I had seen this. Why didn't the Lord say just smear it? Just smear the blood. You know just paint it on. But he said I want you to strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorpost. And I'll tell you why I really believe. It is a picture of the Lamb of God's hands being struck by the nails and the blood Amen. that would have splattered on the side of the cross Amen. and the crown that was planted on his head that Amen. left the blood on the upper post. Are you listening to me? God knows what was going to happen to his son long before that it ever happened. Amen. God said, I want you to strike that blood on those upper door posts Amen. and the two side posts. Amen. And then he said, you're going to eat this lamb. You're going to eat it that night. You're going to eat it with bitter herbs. You know why? Because it was a bitter death of the lamb. And it was a bitter holding of God's people down there in the land of Egypt. And they were to roast it with fire. They wasn't to boil it. They wasn't to take their time fixing it. They were to take that whole lamb head and all and the perkins, that was the heart, that was the kidneys and the liver. Are you listening to me? And uh, I mean the whole lamb. And they were to roast that whole thing. That's a picture of the judgment of the lamb. Amen. That lamb was judged by fire Amen. for them that night. Amen. And they were to eat it. They were to take it in and eat that lamb, eat that burnt lamb 
all night as they eat that burnt lamb. Are you listening to me? And the darkness came upon the land of Egypt. And they knew they had the blood on the doorpost that God had told them there. Now listen, God makes much of what he mentions. And when the Lord said, when I see the blood, you see, it was the blood. It was the blood that God was looking for. I want to say this, the blood on that doorpost was for that house. It was the redemption for that house. And everybody in that house. But that blood was much more for God than it was for the house. You know why? Because God said, when I see the blood, the blood is for my time. When I see the blood of that innocent lamb, when I see the blood on the doorpost, and I know that you have an innocent lamb's blood on your doorpost, I will pass over Amen. you. Amen. That blood was for God. See, God was the one that was offended. God was the one that was sinned against. And that's the way it is. Well, listen, this was a, a beautiful picture, a man of salvation uh, and the sinner and being saved. It, I like it right from the beginning. God told Israel, he said, this day, this Passover day, he said, it shall be a beginning of days for you Amen. and a beginning of months. That's, that's a picture of being a new creature in Christ, having a new life. Starting all over. Amen? Amen. Amen? Starting all over. I've got a new life in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those that come to him have a new life in Christ. Amen. Now he told them after all those plagues had come in and God said I want you to strike that blood on the two side posts and on the upper door post. Amen. I want you to eat that lamb. And eat it with bitter herbs. Eat it, head, legs, and pertinence, all of it, and let nothing of it remain until the morning. And he said, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes and your feet and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now I want to tell you what this, uh, this lamb did, what the blood did, rather. The Passover, listen, putting faith in God and what he said, his token and his promise. Amen. And let me say this. It gave peace to the house that night. Amen. Peace. In him we have peace. Amen. Listen, they may have wondered some of them's assurance may have been shook. I wonder if that blood was really going to hold off the death angel. But I'll tell you what, the house was as calm as it could be that night. They may have been some of them doubting, but it was calm inside. Why? Because God was looking for one thing. He wasn't looking for good works. Are you listening? Amen. He wasn't looking for something else. He wasn't looking for somebody's best best uh, basket of fruit. Amen. Amen. Uh, he, he wasn't looking. He, he, he told them what he was looking for. Amen. And he told them what would bring salvation. And he told them not only what would bring salvation, but what would bring deliverance. He said, you eat this lamb this night. You eat it in haste. You put your shoes on and you get your loins girded up. Amen. Somebody may have thought in their mind, we ain't went nowhere yet. But I'll tell you what, it was the blood was the only thing that was able to bring deliverance Amen. to the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. No other plague, no other plague that God sent down to the land of Egypt was able or capable of giving deliverance, true deliverance, right. and freedom to the children of Israel. But the blood of the Lamb was able to bring a sure deliverance. Amen. A sure deliverance. And it does bring deliverance. You and I are free in Christ. Yes, sir. Free by the blood of the crucified one. They nailed him to the cross. 
nailed him to the cross. Let me say this about when they put the blood there. No blood was put down upon the uh, bottom entrance of the door. It was just on the two side posts and the upper post. No blood was down there on the threshing floor. You know why? Because his blood was not going to be trodden underfoot. Amen. Amen. You don't trodden underfoot foot the blood of the right. innocent lamb. Right. Amen. God warned about people trodden underfoot the blood of, of the Son of God. People today, listen, that's exactly what they're doing. When they say I don't need the blood, I don't need this Jesus fellow, I, I don't need to be born again, uh, like those religious fanatics say, I, I'll tell you what you're doing. You're, you're doing exactly what Pharaoh and his people did. I am going to get by just fine without the blood. Amen. I'll tell you what happened that night. Just exactly what God said would happen. Everybody that didn't have blood on the door. Are you listening to me? That did not have a lamb. Roasted and ate by morning time. Every one of them. Regardless of who they were. They had the death of their firstborn to look at the next day. Judgment came. That's the saddest part of this story. Listen, it doesn't thrill us to preach the judgment of God. And God, listen to me, it doesn't thrill him to have to bring judgment. But he is a holy God. He is a God of judgment. And he'll not let his son, his lamb, his blood be trampled on and mocked on. Are you listening? Spit upon and cursed at. Amen. Lord, have mercy, people. What people are doing today. And, uh, I mean, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. That's what the Bible said. Right. Amen. God doesn't listen. God has, I mean, I'll tell you what Pharaoh could have done. Pharaoh could have come out there that next morning and said, what kind of God would do this? And he may have. Bible don't say it, but he may have. May have been somebody down there in Egypt say something. But I want to tell you something. Moses let the message be known throughout all the land. Right. Are you listening? Right. That God said, everybody, get you a lamb. Get the blood. Put it on the doorpost. Listen, that would have been good for any Egyptian that night. Amen? Amen. It would have been good for all the Hebrews, and it was. And it would have been good for anybody else. Moses delivered this message unto Pharaoh in his house. Pharaoh could have put blood, the blood of an innocent lamb. He could have said, Moses, okay, show me what I've got to do. I, I, I don't want to fight against this God anymore. He's more powerful than I. He ever lives. He, he can accomplish his will and his word. He's proved it thus far. Moses, show me what I need to do. But he did. Amen. Now I want to ask you something. Why would they blame God for the death of the firstborn the next morning? Why would they point their finger in the face of God? And say, I can't believe that he'd do this. Well, he told you. And God has told people for 2,000 years, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Except a man be born again, he shall, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said about coming to him, he said, no man can come to me except the Father would sent me draw him. Listen, our Lord Jesus Christ has been made the high priest. He has been made the sacrifice, the lamb of God. He took his blood into the third heaven where God is. You know why? So that God's judgment seat would be a mercy seat for you and I. Yeah. Amen? That's what the blood does. The Bible tells us that Christ, seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Amen. Right. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmity was at all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace 
that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know what they found that night? They found grace. Amen. Amen. They found grace in the message. They found grace and forgiveness. They found a Passover in the blood of that lamb. God passed over those houses that night and he passed over those ones that had the blood on the doorpost. Are you listening to me? Amen. Oh my, that's all somebody has to do today. Now all somebody has to do. Christ will bring peace into your house. Amen. Amen. I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I am the Lord. I will execute judgment. God will do, do exactly what he said. He said, it is the Lord's Passover. This is a picture, and God told us in the New Testament this was a picture. Amen. This is a picture of salvation. Amen. You know what happened after this? You know what happened after this? It's what's called the Exodus. Mm -hmm. The great departure. I was thinking, I was thinking on spiritual terms earlier today, and I was thinking plague was sin. God's people were worried about the plague. And God said, you'll be safe in the blood. And after the plague came through and passed over, there was an exodus, a departure. Now, I'm not saying that the rapture is fixing to take place, but boy, wouldn't that be a pretty picture? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wouldn't that be a pretty picture for God to just take us out of here? Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. There's a departure. They saw things that they'd never seen. They saw God in a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire. Amen. Pharaoh came after them in hot pursuit, but God divided the Red Sea and let his people cross Amen. On dry ground, drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. There was a great deliverance. Amen. Amen. A great deliverance that God not only brought his people out of Egypt, but brought them through the Red Sea and brought them out to the other side. Amen. And no more Pharaoh behind them. Amen. Amen. A great deliverance. <coughs> Amen. After that, there was Moses' song. Moses sang that wonderful song of God's deliverance. Amen. Thank God for the song and the peace that God can put in our heart and our lives. Knowing that we're saved. Knowing that we're trusting in something. Not ourselves. Listen, I don't think a one of them would have been crazy enough or ignorant enough to just trust in their self that night. This was serious business. Right. And God gave them the plan. God gave them the message. Right. God gave them the way to escape. Right. He said, you take that lamb. A lamb. The lamb. Your lamb. He needs to become personal to you. Right. You need to trust the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. Because when God comes, when he sees the blood, that's what he's looking for. He's not looking for Baptists. He's not looking for Pentecostal holiness. He's not looking for names. Are you listening to me? He's not looking for religion. He's not looking for good works. He's looking for the blood. Amen. Amen. He's looking for the blood of his son. Some people today say, well, I don't uh, believe in that old uh, bloody religion. Listen, they ain't but one kind, and it's bloody. Right. Right. It took the death of God's Son. God's Son left heaven, left everything that he always knew. He is the creator. He is in the beginning. He said, let us make man in our own image. Right. He is the creator. John 1, in the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life. 
John saw him and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Listen, there's not a soul that would ever watch what I've been saying that could say, My sins are too many. My sins are too bad. It's not enough to cover and wash all that I've done away. Oh, yes, it is, my friend. Amen. Whosoever will, he said, let him come. Let him come. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come. Come unto me, and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Amen. Amen. Jesus was lifted up on the cross 2,000 years ago to pay our sin debt that whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Are you saved? Do you know you're saved? I mean, do you know you're born again? Have you accepted Christ as your lamb? I'm not talking about whether you've eaten a piece of bread and drank a little cup of wine. I'm talking about have you accepted Jesus by faith into your heart? Have you asked him, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins? Lord, I confess it and I repent of it. I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, please save my soul. You don't have to say exactly the words that I say, but you've got to repent. You've got to believe the gospel. You've got to repent and believe. Amen. That's the two things you must do to be <clears throat> saved. Repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ. That absolutely, that is an absolute for you to be born again. And you must be born again. Amen. I want them to come right now and sing. I'm done with the message. I hope something has been said today to be a, a help to somebody that they may see the way of salvation. And maybe something's been said to be a blessing to God's people to give you some assurance in these times that we're living in.